Inside the 18, I'm Michael Madden, live from Hollywood, California. With me, you know her as 99 World Cup winner, Suskia Weber. And joining us is somebody that Suskia, not only did she say we have to have Karina on the show, she said we must have Karina on the show. Uh, you guys know her. You guys love her. Canadian goalkeeping legend, now head of women's development for CONCACAF, the one and only KK herself, Karina LeBlanc. Karina, thank you for finding time. You literally are the busiest person I think I know. It was harder to get you on the show than Franz Hook. <laughs> no, I love Franz. And by oh, my the way, God. I love when, him. We, when I posted that you're coming on the show, I think it's like one of the only people that Franz like reacted to. Oh, I love him. <laughs> oh, Oh my God, I love him. We met, we hit it off the first time we met and it's the GK union, you know, like I asked a question. He's like, who's this woman asking this question you right like now? You and know then, that, uh, you know that I trained with him when I was 16 years old, I went to Holland. He's my first mentor, my first coach. Oh, uh, that's probably why he got along with me. Cause he's like, <laughs> you're crazy like her. I've, I've dealt with one of you before. What an, what an incredible man. That's so awesome that you had that training. It, it's a testament oh, yeah. to My parents yeah. were like, get over there. Go to the best. Holland. Saskia in Holland at age 16. Hey, Holland could have had me. I'm a dual citizenship. Too bad. <laughs> Do you see these eyes right now? <laughs> Just kidding. Sask is an angel. She's an angel. And she's wearing the Angel City. Woo! Hey, co-owner. Congratulations for that, too, by the way. You know what's funny? And thank you. And, and like I said, Michael doesn't even need to be on this podcast. But um, <laughs> the funny thing is, is that when um, I got back into soccer because of you. Who? Um, because I was working, what? I was working in nightclubs. I was running the Abbey and stuff like that. And you were here in, I remember in you. LA yes. and you introduced me to Kelly and Parker and the Bulls. And they, they did it the right way. They slowly brought me, you want to come coach the kids one day a week? You know, like that. And that um, got me back out, it got me out of doing nightclubs back into coaching. And then now look, coach of UCLA. <laughs> Listen, you know what? Angel City. What? What? Karina. I would never say I, I, I would have to give my second act of my soccer career to you. Honestly, I'm grateful. Let me tell you this, because I just remember us. I mean, obviously connecting and that's if we even have time to get to all our memories from playing. <laughs> but I just remember, and this no, is one of the Karina, things. You guys can literally just talk the whole time. I wouldn't even have to follow the rundown. Sorry, like, that who's, who's talking? Nothing. Who's talking? I'm kidding, Mike. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't want to, <laughs> sorry, I joke. You thought, but, you thought you were in with it with me, Mike? This is, <laughs> this is my alter ego. Hey, do I have to like tag my hind raise or something? Okay, but I just remember having the conversation because I think one of the things about our generation of players is that we wanted to leave the game better than when we came into it, right? And the games changed our lives. And every single day, this is what I do. I tell people about the power of the game of soccer in young, well, I can only speak for young girls because I'm only a young girl, but, and the power that had in our lives. And I remember connecting with you. And it's one of those things where like, I think all of us on this earth, we want to know why we're here on this earth, right? And when you're an athlete, you know your why, you know, you go play the game, you know, you're inspiring people in the next generation, whatnot, and it's easy. And then you shift and then you're like, what is my purpose? What is my why? And for me, I had the privilege of becoming a UNICEF ambassador and then I stayed in the game in different ways. But I remember a conversation where I was like, girl, like you've impacted this game so much. Like, you know, for me, I'm a black woman. I don't know if anybody knows that, but <laughs> when I saw you running in your rainbow hair, like your red, white, and blue, and how old were you? Cause let's be honest, you're, you're I was like, oh, cup. I don't want to age myself because I was telling people. Oh, sorry, about my I forgot Canada was in that world. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're going to go there? So <laughs> I remember seeing you as a black woman who has found her way to express herself doing what she loved and she was living her why and her purpose. And I think our conversation was beautiful because I was like, girl, don't 
forget who you are. Don't forget all the things that made you. Don't forget why, how incredible you are and how much the game has done for you. Yeah. And like, for, so for me, I know we don't get to connect, but this is a testament that when you have a connection, you just do, because it's like, we just talked yesterday, but it was like, go back to what uniquely brings yeah, you faster said, on this earth. You and look that. at you. And look at me. Can you, you can you believe it? Yes. Yeah, you can. So <laughs> no, and you're right. And, and there was a point that you knew that I had retired from soccer and I wanted nothing to do with it because I was a little bitter about some stuff we'll talk about off air. And um, I, but I also wanted to just see what else was out there and do other things. And uh, somehow I ended up running nightclubs, which nobody's surprised about. Nope. <laughs> hey, you hooked me up, so I don't even like. Don't worry about it. Don't even happy. bring up. Don't even bring up my party in Manhattan. <laughs> that was. Hey, good. girl, what you doing? That was good. My party, in, in, we can't. I can't. This isn't this podcast. So, um, <laughs> so, uh, but you know, yeah. Part having you in my life and stuff um, brought me back. And now I'm, happy. I'm so proud of you. Look at you. And now you're doing things where young girls, women my age, men, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Look at what you do. And they say bravo. So yeah. bravo to you. Well, look at you. Congratulations with Paris. Oh, thank you. Paris. Thank you. And why we, I know why <laughs> Paris. <laughs> That's okay. uh, since we're talking about it, like, so for the World Cup, um, I was privileged <laughs> enough to be with the Fox team. And so we were in Paris for 45 days. And I mean, the biggest World Cup, yeah, the baddest was... World Cup, the deepest World Cup. And it was, it was a statement of the power of women in sports and the power of what we can, women can do. And uh, yeah, she was conceived there. Um, <laughs> but most importantly, it's what it stands for, right? And I'm, it like, stands for... I'm like, was all that in your thought process <laughs> during conception? <laughs> no, that's the thing. You're like, it's the biggest World Cup. It's the baddest World Cup. Yeah. Hey, you know, <laughs> these, these women, they, they inspire you, as my husband said. Anyway, now let's, let's stick to goalkeeping. Let's stick yes. to inside day team. Okay, oh, sorry. Hi, God. Mike. How you doing? Oh, I'm, I'm I, I was totally just joking. I was, <laughs> no, I know, I know. No, no, honestly, I, I will honestly say one of the things is that one of the most amazing things is that sometimes you can tell when somebody just has a wonderful energy about them immediately when you met them. The first time I met Karina was actually at the, um, I think it was at the Total 90, I think, after party at MLS All-Star yeah. in, Orla in Orlando. Yeah. In Orlando. You know, and Miguel Gallardo is like, oh, yeah. I'm, he's like, I'm going to go hang. He's, he's like, oh, oh, Karina LeBlanc's over there. I'm like, I'm like, oh, I got, I loved what she was doing with uh, all, the, all, all the analysis that she was doing on for Foxes. She's like, oh, do you want to go meet her? And uh, in between all the dancing that was going on, you were much, very, very willing to meet, very willing to meet me. <laughs> um, but just the energy that you had, the passion that you had was just absolutely phenomenal and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know it's taken a while for us, for us all to connect on, on the air and everything. Like that. And at the time, Suskia wasn't even, uh, uh, even a part of this. This was just a very kind of just kind of just starting out and yeah in they brought the in the heavy process. hitter brought in the heavy hitter later on <laughs> but, KK, just just to tell you because this this show is going to be four hours um this uh <laughs> the uh the um the, the way that Suski actually ended up on the show was she came on as a guest Shaman? and then afterwards she was yeah. like hey she's like hey this she's like fine. can i come back next week we're like, hey, it was basically your show, so. <laughs> and then she, I, then took, she came, I took over. <laughs> she came back That's the week after. Yeah, she came That's back the week did. after that, and she was like, "Oh my god, that was so much fun." She's like, "Can I, can I come back next week?" Yeah. And I, was, I, after like three times, we're like, "Do you want to just be on the show?" And she's like, "Yes, that's what I want to do." Yeah. Honestly. So. I love her because that's what she does. Honestly, yeah. but why not, right? It, it, yeah. Can, can this be a lesson for whoever's watching this show? If, especially as a goalkeeper, like we're brave enough to do things that few can do, but just be brave enough to ask. I think it, as, as, I mean, it's, as women, we don't step up and say we deserve and we can do this and can I just do this? Because again, Mike, it's about people opening up the doors for others. And yeah. she dared to ask and you're like, heck yeah. And it's only just made it better. And it's almost like a testament of where culturally we, we need I'm to go and- uh, yeah, No, no scared. <laughs> No, I, I mean, I, I was like, "Hey, can I come? I want to come on all the time." <laughs> you know, one 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 of one of the really impressive things, and then then we'll kind of get into the topics and everything like that. KK is that a lot of 
young women, young men, whenever they come on the show, you know, first off, we're very humbled the fact that like so many pros watch the show, you know, and listen to the podcast and everything like that. Like that means a lot to us when we reach out to people and they're like, yeah, of course I want to be on the show. I, I will listen to the show, but they say how inspirational they, when they come on and a lot of them will even say it on the air. They'll say, you know, Hey, Saskia, I remember you with the red, white, and blue hair, you know, that was one of my first soccer memories, you know, growing up as a kid, you know, coming in, you know, uh, coming into the game, especially if you're talking about, you know, the, the young pros now, you know, 23, 24, 25, you know, totally. this is literally one of that 99ers team really is the first major sporting event that they remember that made them go, Oh my gosh, this is a thing I could do for a living, regardless of gender, regardless of mm -hmm. gender, you know? And I think that's, what's so impressive and the power of the 99ers and, 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 and all, and just Saski in general, in regards to just her energy and everything like that is that nobody ever says like, Oh, that's, that was a women's soccer team or like, Oh, I remember that women's team or whatever. No, they, they come on and they're like, you know what? Your team inspired so many kids mm -hmm. to continue into the game, you know? Yeah, and, I, mean, and, I always like it that it's, it's like those places. I'm not like patting myself on the back. You know me, you know that yeah. I'm, I'm very humble and stuff, but I always like that. It's like one of those things like, do you remember where you were? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like one of those things in history. Like, do you remember mm -hmm. where you were? Like, and totally. that's cool. And it, it, it's not that it was a women's game or this. It, do you remember where you were? And they won the World Cup and PKs. And I get so many stories and, and that's awesome. You know, and I love that. No. Let me add to that too, though. But I mean, you talk about the next generation. I like I was I played in that World Cup, right? There was another goalkeeper that played. That was my <laughs> first World Cup. And that generation was impacted but here i am as a competitor i was cheering for us like you would have like i was in like i was part of that because i was yeah. like it was so important to me as a player and i was like this is huge because at that point up until that point i played for my country and, and i had a lot of honor in playing for my country but where you think of a life and whatnot a lifetime this could be a job that was not even a reality. Yeah, it, so wasn't, that, in your, it wasn't in your wheelhouse no. at all. So that, that, that World Cup and that final game and that goal, like that was like <laughs> the eruption was like, this could be a life. Yeah. And so, and, and you, and you've taken it and run with it. Yeah. By the way, really quick, Shannon Gordon, KK, she's saying hi. Hi, uh, Grandma. <laughs> hi, Grandma. <laughs> Woo. Making me cry. <laughs> Hi, Grandma. Ugly cry. Ugly cry, Grandma. And she hasn't even seen it, Shannon, but we had that story before we went. Oh, there. I know. And it's an ugly cry, and I'm so sending her that video. Um, oh, I love it. We've got 16 weeks uh, to the little baby, the little baby girl. <gasps> yes. Baby girl. Baby Future girl. goalkeeper. I With my baby girl parents, I've already given her a soccer ball, a small ball, and she's, like, holding it. And let me warn you, like, so my husband was a player. He also played for Canada as, as well. But he was all an right. outside back. So <laughs> I'm just going to let them like fly by with all these birds. <laughs> so he was an outside back. But guess what? I was like, no, she's going to be a goalie. And everyone's like, no. And I'm like, do you understand the geniusness that makes her? Do you understand how she'll be prepared for life? Like Absolutely. every goalkeeper shaking their head right now because we're not crazy. We're geniuses. Like nobody else can step into our position and perform. And I can go up to top. therapy. No, exactly. I can go up top and score a goal. Like put the ball there. I was doing some power diving today, which I never do in training. I never do, but I was just trying to engage the goalkeepers and stuff. And listen, I, I'm not a big power diving trainer or coach. And they're like, we love it. And I'm like, um, man, we have issues. I was like, I'm like, goalkeepers have issues. I'm like telling you to fly to the upper 90 and a full sprint and everything just to engage those muscles. And you're like, it. yeah. And I'm like, what is wrong? I was like, talk to me in 15 years when you're like, when you have a, your sciatica is acting up. Yeah. <laughs> I you did the dive. Sorry, Mike. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Guys, keep going. I, I was just going to say, I was going to try to segue into kind of the whole thing, because I think it's really fascinating. The fact is, you know, kind of the topic that we want to kind of tr cover today is, you know, goalkeepers transitioning, you know, onto the other side of the pitch. But the thing about you, Karina, is that you're, you're not just on the other side of the pitch. You're on it. You're, you're everywhere. You're literally 
and I think that's the modern, I think kind of like, that's kind of like the new, the new trend is that like former players are becoming multi hyphen. Like they're not just now coaches and now just front office or now just ambassadors or now just analysts, you know, they're kind of doing the whole shebang, you know, hosting podcasts, owning teams, you know, coaching at, you know, prestigious universities, you know, they're kind of doing everything. They're not being pigeonholed oh, into, we're, we're, into wow, one sort of ego thing. is getting stroked today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling good. Well, you know, that, that's good. good. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but the thing that I think I really want to bring up though, is because I think the number one role that I think is absolutely so fascinating, I think a lot of people here who are watching want to know a little bit more about is kind of like football development, because I think as goalkeepers personally, I think we're so we're so, we see the game in such a different way. We have such a different point of view, you know, and maybe for some of the people out there who are not familiar with kind of like what we mean by football development, can you kind of describe it in your own words? Oh, well, you just asked like five questions there. So I'll go to the only one you asked. Welcome. Um, <laughs> no, I think one of the things, um, can I touch on the other, all the other ones about the transition? And post? Okay. So yeah. I think one of the things that every athlete goes to, because again, we're used to a structured life, right? We're sadly, if you make it to the highest level, like your life is planned for you. You're focused on one thing and that's being the best version of yourself in that position that you can be. So when you take that away, and I'll never forget it, it's just like I was actually just shaking my hand and I'm like, I'm Karina LeBlanc, not the Olympian, not the soccer player, not, you know what I mean? It's just blank. And that blank is scary, right? And this is also something we're having at the conversation at the CONCACAF level, at the global level, is how do we help athletes transition easier and better? So you know, from I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interject really quick with this. This is something that I've been bringing up nonstop. I brought it up with the Players Association and stuff like that. And when everybody asks me what the hardest thing about, um, what's the hardest thing that you've had to deal with with soccer? And it's like, why? It's like retiring. Mm -hmm. And everybody looked at me and I said, you, you don't understand. And mm -hmm. I'm like, when you're at that elite level, when you're at the top, when you've, when you've won everything, when you've done anything, there's a lot of facets to retiring. It's not, you don't just retire yourself. You retire your family. Mm -hmm. um they you have to go through what they're dealing with and they uh, emotionally go through your retirement oh, and too, they go right? through it and they go like, through it Absolutely. all the shoe deals are no longer there so you guys don't yeah get there's christmas not Nike under the christmas tree like <laughs> every every christmas but um but you know they go through that too as well as um you know there is post-olympic stress syndrome is reality and i went through totally. it hardcore and I still battle with it and you look at like Michael Phelps and people like that that that's something that has to be identified it's not like hey here's your jersey and thanks and I'm gonna you know retire you and well done you know Christine Lilly or well done Saskia Weber or well done Karina LeBlanc okay peace you know what the hell do you do then and in that sense of emptiness is, is something that has to be identified and dealt with from all federations and for CONCACAF and for everybody. Like it's, it's a serious issue. Sorry. It's, it's, a, it's a serious issue. And, I, and people at home who are watching or listening to this, you don't even have to be a goalkeeper to understand it or a player because yeah. we all go through transitions. We're going through one right now. But the thing is, it's like at the core of who you are, to Saskia's point, you lose it because you're no longer training. Like I remember, I'm gonna, it sounds silly. I remember four days I retired after a home world cup in Canada and four days after I went to the gym and I was like, what do I do? I didn't have a program. Right. That's why I started laughing. I was like, Oh, not the gym. <laughs> because I was like, and then I saw somebody on the treadmill walking and reading a book and I was like, can't do that. <laughs> and then I saw like, and, but I was no longer training to be the fastest or the strongest. Yeah. But you I don't know how not to. So you're like, no. you don't, there's no, there's no middle there's, ground. Yeah. And there's no like, switch. Like, like, I don't, what, what is that walking and reading a book on the treadmill? And then there's a person, now that's what running, I do. There's a person next to you <laughs> running on the treadmill. And yeah. you're like, well, I got to run as fast as he does yeah. as well as it's, too. And there is no, there's no transition. There's no, like, how do you, how do you go from training to be the best in the world all the time? Every time you wake up to all of a sudden being like, you can go for a jog. But the one thing too, I would say though, is what helped me, I think is I started and it's, it's a heavy conversation to say to a current athlete, but I started thinking about it like 
three years before, right? And it's- Because you saw me. (laughs) 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 You're like, oh shit, I gotta gotta make sure that I'm not as stressed out as Saskia. You're an idiot. Oh, you, uh, you did so, hold on, Sask. You ended up you ended up highfalutin and you know running all over the place. You know hosting I that TV show. Clubs. You had a lot going let's, on. Let's and, get dig, We won't dig deeper into that. Listen, all of it led you to who you are today. <laughs> Look at it that way. But I think for anybody listening, the most important thing is that like like for me, I my biggest thing is I ended up connecting to. I know it sounds super corny. But I ended up kept connecting to my why beyond me as a footballer. Sorry, as a soccer player. Um, we call it football because CONCACAF, those of you who don't know, it's 41 countries, North America, Central America, and all the Caribbean countries. And football is what the world calls it. But I ended up connecting to that by going on a trip with UNICEF in, in Honduras, which changed my life because I saw the power of dropping a ball. And I had this aha moment. And I think... For anybody, and, and I know a lot of the listeners here are probably current players, right? And it's not to freak you out, but I think you need to ask yourself, like, what do I uniquely bring to this world that makes me a good footballer or soccer player, but I can take anywhere? And it's the things that we learn. Like Saskia and I, like every time we talk, like we learn how to communicate to anybody. Think about it. We have to communicate to everybody in front of us and get them to do things so that we'd have to do nothing. And we can look at it that way. But <laughs> it's but true. The best save we, a goalkeeper make is no save at all. Exactly. <laughs> so we thought like it's all these assets that we learned through the position that we have to learn to own that and take that into the real world and realize that what we've learned puts us, and it's not an egotistical thing, it puts us in a different category. And we need to own that category and walk in it with strength. So yeah. And on the development side, listen, football development is so complicated. Um, you would need, but from, from my perspective, I, I, the simplest way to say it is we want to show how a, a soccer ball can change the life of a young girl. I, 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 sorry. I absolutely love that. And, and I think after having Gabby on, um, the other day and just like the, her experiences in Argentina when she went to play for the, you know, in Argentina for the Argentinian national team and just, you know, we're still battling like, you know, equality and, and, and just getting, getting that, that dream into the minds of people that actually want to dream it. And, and, mm-hmm. you know, you know, you can go from such privilege in a sense and Kay, you were there with us. Like we, you, you know, we didn't, this isn't where we came from. Like we came no. from wearing men's uniforms and being happy if you went home with a t-shirt and some per diem. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, sweet, I got per diem. I'm not eating, I'm keeping it. <laughs> I like, I'm like, dollar. Woo. Woo, woo, woo. I'm like, by the time I leave, that's like a hundred bucks. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not going to the mall. Yeah, exactly. That's how we learned our math. 10 days, 10 camp. Like, hundred dollars. I'm like, dude, like I'm rich. I got a t-shirt, I got a new pair of sneakers. Like, you know, we've all, we've been there. Not, you know, and so I think, you know, remembering, I think the biggest thing, I think there was a time and space with, I would say US soccer, cause I'm not gonna speak for Canada. Um, although I know- I was actually gonna tease you and say like, that's US soccer. You guys had that per diem and all those benefits. <laughs> I was like, I'm not gonna speak for Canada. But you won World Cup, so it's, it's, it's warranted. <laughs> close so I think um I think there was a time in there that I think people forgot it and I think that's Mm -hmm. why the U.S. took 15 years to win another World Cup and I'm not calling people spoiled and if I do you can send me hate mail I really don't care because I've won a World Cup and I don't care what you say um but I I think that that is why and I think that the the team now there are entities on that team now that get it and that's mm-hmm. why, and like, you know, the sour bruns and people like that, like they get it. And mm-hmm. I think that, you know, that, that brings it back. They get the fight. They get that, that fight started, that's fight started in the eighties, man. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, long before anything. And so the transition and the, the, the growth of women's soccer and the growth of soccer period, you know, we can get down to tactical and technical and the size of these girls blows me away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> they're all like five nine and above it's like but that's the thing because <laughs> if you think about it and again what 99 did is it inspired a world of young girls to say that's what i want to do instead of playing right? other sports instead of playing other sports and and to your point is other countries started to invest and this Absolutely. country saw listen if i invest a little bit the return on investment is so much bigger. And I'm not talking dollars and cents. I'm talking about young girls. And as we see the study show, girls who play sports and have a CEOs and, you know, they end up doing so many more things. So the eyes got open out of leadership to say, listen, let me invest more into this woman's game because guess what's possible? And the what's possible became World Cup champions for other countries, right? Oh, Became man. Olympic champions, you know, and to the point of development, it's it's exciting. And and watch the last World Cup. What the American team did is phenomenal. But the result of that is that more countries are going to want to do it. If I look at a Jamaica from our region, right? Jamaica qualified. All of a sudden, in all of our Caribbean countries, you have to see it to believe it. They see a black girl from a small island like them playing on that big stage, they may have only scored one goal, but you know the wins they that had in that awesome goal. And who wasn't cheering for that, man? Exactly. Who wasn't cheering for that? <laughs> I started crying when they scored that goal. <laughs> exactly. But again, the power of the game, right? Like sometimes, and I think for me in my position, it's interesting because sometimes we see the North America perspective of it, right? Of what we have. But then and you can what can travel? I get from it? it? It turned into a very selfish part. It's like, well, can I go pro? I don't have to go to college. I'm going to go pro. Like, what kind of money can I make? What? And I get that. That's that's the evolution of being a pro, pro athlete. And that's the evolution of it. And there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. At the same time, we have to remember that that little kid with the big eyes in a, on Jamaica, on the island, mm -hmm. just wants to, to have cleats and a soccer ball and be allowed to play. Absolutely. So, so there's such a... And that doesn't exist that much with the men. It really, it doesn't exist with the men anymore. Like, it's it. There's such a exactly. Difference. There's such yeah. A it's like Ronaldo or Messi. But honestly, we have a couple programs where honestly, it's it's girls who've never played before, and we go to the field, and we bring 150 girls in from the country that day, and they're nervous. They're like, oh my god, like what is this? I've never even played the sport before. By the end of the day, they're crying, they're jumping, they're screaming, they're confident. And they're like, this is the best day of my life. And why? Because we brought a ball and we dropped it and we allowed them to play and we allowed them to feel valued and connected. And I think that's the power of a team sport, right? Is you're connected with other people on something bigger than yourself, whether it's the result or just the fact of playing and having oranges at halftime. You're connected on something. I used to be the shyest kid in the world. Nobody ever believes this. Until Me too. I know. Now, <laughs> now every parent's going to be like, my daughter no, cannot be true. Because that's <laughs> not. You weren't shy? I was shy. Come on, Jersey. I don't know. I have to ask Wilhelmina and Travis, but I don't think I was ever shy. In Princeton, New Jersey, you weren't shy? <laughs> See, you scare me. <laughs> I know too much. You know too much. <laughs> I, I want to. I do want to bring up one thing right now, though. Just oh, Mike's listen, here. Li listening to <laughs> Mike, bring this back. He's like, listen, guys. Lis listening okay. to you guys talk about this, though, Karina. One thing I, I honestly never even thought about is like because I think one one of the problems sometimes is like when we're doing a show like this or we're so you know involved in this world. You mm -hmm. know, when I think of football development, I'm just thinking about the nuts and bolts and I'm thinking about like technical development, tactical development, like, you know, reaching for tangible goals, like winning World Cups or like, you know, you know, qualifying, you know, for CONCACAF championships and, you know, moving on and that, those sorts of things. I never even think about the fact that football development really can be about the human development and Absolutely. what football can bring to the community, which is so Absolutely. much and more important now when I think about it. And like Karina, you brought up a great point. Like, and, and those statistics are across the board with every sport. When women get involved in sports, like, sorry, I'm going to be blunt about this, but teen pregnancy goes down. Like, mm -hmm. you know, and all these things like graduation, go up, yeah. graduation rates go up, um, college tuition, like college and like admissions go up and everything because it, 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 it promotes that positive mentality and that I can do anything mentality. And it doesn't mean that you're, you have to go into soccer or lacrosse mm -hmm. or swimming to win a world cup. It means it, it promotes 
confidence and power. Let me tell you, I'll tell you my, my, my life changing story. Um, it, it goes back to before I retired. When you I met me? Traveled, yes. That, <laughs> Sorry. That's it. Sorry. <laughs> that was it. I got nothing else. Uh, <laughs> So my second most impactful story uh, actually came when I went to Honduras and I was with UNICEF. I had the honor of being, I have the honor of being a UNICEF ambassador. And I went to a small town. And when I landed to Unif uh, into Honduras that day, I remember the debriefing was like, there's 44 deaths tonight in the city, you know, and all these things. And I'm Canadian guys. So 44 deaths, I'm like, what? This is a big deal, but they travel. We, we go into this small town, dirt gravel road where you, we all would be like, we're just going to talk today. And on the other side are 13 and 14 year old girls putting down their babies. Okay. You only know what you know. You only know what you know. And it's not for me to judge or anything. So I get out of my car and I see these girls sprinting across, right? They've never seen me play in a world cup in the Olympic games. It's the fact that I showed up. And this is such an important lesson about showing up for people in life. So I'm sitting there and I, they've had me done so many political things and everything because it's about like educating them on HIV and all these real topics that again, we don't necessarily have to deal with on a daily basis. And I start jumping up and they're like, you're gonna throw a, a little camp. And I'm like, all these young girls, okay, just me. And I'm like trying to do things. And right away I noticed five gray jerseys and I'm like, and they're like, Miss LeBlanc, what's wrong? I go, Who, where'd these jerseys come from? Because ask her, you know, it takes a lot to throw me off. And I'm like, so the coach comes and he's like, uh, Miss LeBlanc, what's wrong? I'm like, where'd these jerseys come from? They have little holes in them and stuff. And he's like, it came from a Canadian years ago. What's the problem? Those gray jerseys, I'm in the middle of Honduras, were the first ever club I'd played for as a young girl in Canada. What? What? And it hit me. I was doing exactly what I was meant to be doing with the people I was meant to be. And this is where I say the game teaches you so much more, but the power of the game is beyond the wins and the losses, right? It's so much greater than that. We drop the ball. These girls are screaming, jumping. And then after we were able to sit them down and talk to them about real life issues that impact them, real life issues to your point that can make grades better to get them the power of the voice, the confidence. And this is what the game does, especially for young girls around this world. I know in Canada and the US, it's sometimes, sometimes it's too driven on the wins and the losses in the World Cup. And trust me, Saskia and I are very proud to say that we've been in that 0.005%. But most of the world, it's not about that. And it's almost shifting, like in our region, like sometimes I'm having conversations where like, well, what's the power of the game? Because they don't get to turn on the TV and see the U.S. women okay. win the World Cup. But the power of the game is the voices of these women. That makes the news. And then all of a sudden, in a small country, a parent sees this and says, wait, if my daughter plays soccer, she'll be that confident? Or, you know, I may go talk and they're like, you play, is that where your confidence comes? Yeah, it came from the power of this game. So to your point of development, my job is not just to help grow women's football so we have one, two, three, four, five in the world rankings. Trust right. me, we want that. But it's also to get as many girls to understand the value of themselves through the sport and see how great they are by playing the sport. I'm so proud of you. I mean, I mean, I mean, that, that's absolutely, that's absolutely phenomenal. I mean, you know, it's and true. And, and I, but I think that that's what I try to, I've tried to say to you so many times. I think that, you know, that was something that Karina knows that like the U the U S team, the 99ers, everybody's always been a part of. And I think mm -hmm. that it was obvious when that was lost, mm -hmm. that mentality was lost for a while. And, um, and, you know, it's slowly coming back, but it, it's obvious, you know, we've always been about like empowering women and empowering ourselves. And, and it, it has nothing to do with the wins and losses. It has nothing to do with soccer. It has nothing to do with the world cup. It has to do with your own personal confidence and um, knowing that you can do anything. That's and honestly, I, to your point, Saskia, anybody listening to this right now, take the lesson of that is that 
like we're all here for something bigger than ourselves first and foremost and when you actually get that that's when you start actually living a life and to your point that's why Saskia you probably feel so much more alive now because we're we're here for not for ourselves right like it's like great like <laughs> you've won these all these things what how important is it to be at home in a chest or and holding all that stuff in it's like all the things we've learned whether you end up playing high school soccer and your career ends there you as a human being don't end there you're just beginning it's what we learn from the yeah, game yeah and that's the truth and the, the greatest gift i've ever gotten isn't isn't a trophy on the shelf or medals behind me or anything the greatest gift i've ever gotten is being me, able to meeting talk. me meeting me go ahead as yes yeah, meeting karina <laughs> absolutely and knowing the Canadian, but you're second. And knowing the Canadian national anthem, okay. Um, you're second. Sorry, I've heard it so many times when oh, that yeah. you know the flag came up second on the podium. Um, so it is actually it, there's it, a bad I, connection here. You, a bad connection. <laughs> you actually made me lose my train of thought. But the greatest gift is not those things, and you can always ask me. It's actually being able to reach out and and talk to yeah. people and 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 communicate and change little girls' lives, little boys' lives. Um, uh, and everything. Those are the greatest gifts out of this. Not, not, you know, yes, the medals like move that into, make it possible, you know, yeah. it's, it's make it possible for me to reach more people. And I, and I'm Absolutely. incredibly like honored for that, but what am I going to do with it? And that's the, mm -hmm. that's the question. Like, you know, I can, I can be a total jackass and I can be like, yeah, I won world cups and also, ah, and I don't give a shit about anybody. But the truth of the matter is that's not why I was put on this earth. And I've told everybody that, you know, any athlete that tells you that they, you know, they love being an athlete, but they're not a role model is an asshole. Oh, so, I don't get that at all. I don't get I that like... at all. You got little, little kids looking up to you wearing your jersey. And you're going to tell me you're not a role model. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's interesting. Like my greatest fear on this earth, and I'm a spiritual person, but is to not live a life that I was meant to live and an impact who was meant to impact in my time on this mm. earth that's my greatest fear like and if you do, if you if you think about it like that like being a role model what an honor right what an honor what an honor on any level say, like even oh. you mike like what an honor on every level we have a platform mm -hmm. what are we going to do with it yeah you know i mean look i mean uh i mean i'm kind of a Hold on, I'm, I'm sorry, at a loss for words as a, as a text comes through from somebody who was asking me if I've read their screenplay yet. So I'm very much a role model. People are very interested in what I have to say about their career, their their journeys when it comes to 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 the arts. Um, I, I want I want to pivot. I want to. I want to pivot real quickly because I want to talk to some goalkeeping stuff. And, oh yeah, and, and Karina, you do analysis, and I think you know one of the cool things is especially and and Suskia, you know, she really attests for this as well, too, you know, as, when she came on back on the show and everything like that. It's just, you know, how much the positions changed in the last 20 years or so, you know, um, and, and, and just how playing during that time period. And then also you kind of kind of, you know, being at the at the kind of the tail end of your career was kind of when the modern goalkeeper started to becoming kind of the, the, the thing that. The norm. The the I, was I was at the tail end. Okay. Tail end. okay fine. You know what, Mike? He was in her heyday. She stuck around for like 15 more years. <laughs> like... Sorry, Mike. Well, we're, we're, we're well you know, the thing is, this, if you go on Y Scout, you can still find Karina on there. Like, they're just like waiting a, for you to come yeah, back I'm on the team. I'm not even on Y Scout. I'm on the eight track. Um, or eight millimeter. I'm on eight is. millimeter. Uh -oh. So, <laughs> no, it's just videos. Um, no, but the point being is that I think it's a good question to ask you, Karina, because you, yes, I was more at the tail end of my career um, after 99 and stuff where you were kind of in the middle and in the, you know, your heyday in the beginning. And you've kind of seen that trans transition more as oh, yeah. a player and now, you know, as an analyst and everything um, for Fox and stuff. And so I think that, like, what have you seen I mean, I know what I've seen because like I went, I took a like 16 year hiatus and I came back, I'm like, what? <laughs> so <laughs> I'll say one thing that's stay consistent is goalkeepers don't get enough respect. I'm just kidding. Um, listen, I, towards like in the 1990s when like the goalkeeper literally was the last line of defense, right? 
And all of a sudden it switched to the first line of the offense. And I mean it, and it's, it's like, we used to be able to pick up the ball, right? <laughs> Back pass, like, like I, I was like, okay, pick up the ball. And all of a sudden you have to use your feet. And then now the game's like, literally the goalkeeper does the sessions with the players apart from a desk additional. And I remember it because I mean, our trainings just change, change, like change drastically. Like it literally was, I remember by the end of my career, we would get there before the team to do Mm -hmm. the goalkeeping training. We will train the entire time with the team because again, the goalkeepers weren't like, okay, go train for an hour and then come back and we'll do some shooting. It was, we were incorporated into the full practice and you were expected to make that 30 yard ping with your left foot. I mean, I was right footed to the outside back that's going on the run. So the amount of time and detail and attention that I remember I had to put into my game and transitioning was no longer about like to the point of like, let's be explosive and stuff like that. It was like, realistically, I remember having this conversation because we used to just hammer, like my old time coaches would be like, okay, just like hammer, like you burn like 2000 calories in a, in a training session. But then all of a sudden it was just, okay, you're likely only going to have to make three back-to-back saves, right? So let's train for that. But a majority of what you're going to be doing is so much more. So let's start to train for this. And it's the shift. It's the mental shift. It was all of it. And, and um, yeah, it, 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 the game's completely shifted. But it's so beautiful to watch. Because yeah. I remember just, like, watching Neuer, like, at the beginning, he was like an anomaly, right? Like, it was like, how is he doing this? And yeah. now it's expected. Yeah, and I think that I missed that shift, <laughs> <laughs> which I have no problem. But I was always like an offensive mind and um, goalkeeper anyway. Like, mm-hmm. I was always looking to ping the ball up to the, ni- up to the nine, or I was always looking to find uh, Christine Lilly outside or something like that and bypass, you know, the, def- the um, their attacking line, the defense, and – everything and so that was always my mentality I love myself some small sided games and everything because I just bypass anybody threw a ball and Mia would score and that was good (laughs) I hate going against Saskia um but um but yeah like I missed that major shift and transition and even for me coming back as a coach and having to and, and having to realize how much I have to incorporate you know, going from my training thought process and regimen and really learning from like mm-hmm. Michael Omar and people like that from France, how I have to incorporate out so much distribution, totally. and so much confidence with your feet to the point that I always make sure my goalkeepers are in rondos and everything like that because their team has to feel comfortable passing the ball to them. So that's mm-hmm. a good way to get them comfortable, but too, you've got to be comfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and to see the way these girls can ping a ball, man. Oh. I mean, I, all I needed Phenomenal. to do was take a goal kick. I know. I know. <laughs> well, like, no, honestly, I, mean, I, I got in trouble because, like, <laughs> honestly, when I was watching the World Cup, I would be like, I was like, man, what a diag. And they'd be like, what? I'm like, that's a hard diag to hit, guys. What? No, it's not. You're suppo- I'm like, no, they're goalkeepers, remember? Like, <laughs> Yeah, and you don't really, like, like, the balls that, like, Lauren can ping for UCLA, like, they, I'm like, wow. Yeah, like she can put impressive. it on the money as if she was, you know. The it's standard. expected now, though, right? Yeah, it's yeah. expected. But I'm like, can we give kudos to it? You know what I'm I mean? Like, wow. But well, but I mean, like, but but I th- but I think that wow. is the that is the thing too. Is like, for instance, like I, I just want to bring up like just a you know quip of the other K. Let's you see know, it. and by the way, this is no disrespect to like Steph or Sabrina or any of the other Canadian keepers. It's just I only had 30 <laughs> seconds to find one one clip. Um. So now anyway, so Kaylin Sheridan's amazing. Phenomenal. With her feet. She's so feet. good with her feet. It's ridiculous. Phenomenal. And I tell her all she knows. I tell her all she knows. Ask her. I'm kidding. First off, kidding. first off, we, we are on the show. Yeah, we love Kaylin. I mean, she, we, she's, yeah, she's the best. She's but anyway, Canadian. she's a Canadian goalie guy, guys. What I you know, expect? I know. You Canadians. <laughs> we have Canadians all the time. We had Devin on a couple oh, weeks ago. Man. Like we always have Canadians uh, on. We had see? Steph on. Yeah. Our so. Home <laughs> Anyway, um, but but it all starts with the prep touch here, and I think that's that's the thing that I think a lot of you know young goalkeepers, you know, uh, KK when they when they when they see these types of clips, I think it's important when you guys as an at- analysts are, are there who actually were goalkeepers and and know the position to be like, mm-hmm. hey, it's not just about the final action here; it's it's that prep touch mm-hmm. where she saw the chase coming right there, and then back in the day, you know this, Karina, this used to be that's a, that was a mishit. 
but that was an yeah. intentional ball on her part, yeah. you know, and, and yeah. the, 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 the discipline, the discipline and also the, the skill set to be able to find that kind of ball and to not have the fear of playing that type of ball. I think that's what's so phenomenal about, about, about the young players today. And I you know, think that, that that that's absolutely, when we went over this today, actually at practice at UCLA and, you know, but it's also that sheer understanding of when to bypass that, you know, their attacking line and your first line, your your defensive Boom. third line and, and understanding short, short, when to pass, when to have the confidence to ping that ball up into the midfield, um, when to know, when to clear. But she takes that touch, that prep touch wide because she also knows who's coming on her opposite side. So that's all part of reading the game. It's not luck. It's all right. I have pressure coming from my left side. I'm going to take my prep touch to my right. I have my option short here, but you know, everybody's expecting me to do the short option. So they, they shifted over and they opened up that lane for her and to have the confidence to play that ball up in there. That is a different way than we played period. Yeah, absolutely. And to even add to the point, the reason why it's not a surprise for her and something too of those who are players or maybe those who are coaches is that, they probably went through this in practice. Oh, right? absolutely. To the point that the goalkeeper has to be part of the session. It's like, they're probably tracking this. How many times do you break the line? She just broke two lines with one pass. That's a positive pass. In the past, for right, right away, it used to be like, okay, goalkeepers, you know what? Just hit it to the corner. Boot it. That's fine. Okay. Or, okay, just try to get it to the halfway line. Now, the expectation is like, listen, what happens after the player receives that pass? Is it positive? Did you put the player in a positive position to right. do something, right? And it's like, to ask you, it's all different types of passes. And it's, again, the shot stopping is what most people see the game is about, right? Did, did you make all the big saves? But what makes a great goalkeeper to the point of what we talked about earlier is actually having to be no saves. But what you do to actually affect and impact your other players so that they can go on and get the goals and stuff. So yeah, the game, yeah. I think that's a part of the new, like, uh, I would say, you know, these kids, they can't be shot stoppers. So anybody out here watching and stuff like that, and you, you know, weekend warrior coaches and coaches that don't understand goalkeeping, but you have goalkeepers and you're trying to coach them. They're not shots. You're not training a kid to be a shot stopper because mm -hmm. let's, let's do the math. Like how often are they saving those balls? What are they doing? 90% of the time in goal, they're distributing. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. are the first, their first pass on attack. They are distributing and communicating. Mm -hmm. And then, the, too, and then yeah. the other 10%, maybe they're, they're saving a ball. Yeah. And so why spend 90% of your time in practice having these kids save shots and not work on their footwork and not work on their distribution like I, I told Mike last when we were on our last podcast what irritates the hell out of me is I had a coach and club come up to me and be like you know can you really work on Max's goal kicks because they're you know they're not very good and I go you know I go none of your field players can serve a ball so mm -hmm. maybe while I have him for one day a week, I can work on goalkeeping stuff and that <laughs> will incorporate some distribution, but mm -hmm. maybe teach all of your players how to serve a ball. And while yeah. he's with you, he'll learn how to serve a ball too. Because yeah. I'm like, I think, I think that's a, yeah, one of the biggest things, you know, and uh, before we move on is that I want to, I want to really, really stress that to all the young parents out there, because that is the number one question that gets asked, especially private coaches. It's like, Oh, well, let's like, can, can you work on, can you work on his feet? He's not very good with his feet. And I'm just like, literally like, I'm like, you pay to play club soccer at an ECNL club, you know, or a DA club or whatever. And you're telling me that you need me to go and work on the mechanics of striking a ball yeah. with your son or daughter during this private one time. hour for one week. It, mm -hmm. Shouldn't your club be teaching your child the mechanics of striking the ball because look, that's not a goalkeeper single, specific but, but listen, issue every, that but means I it's something that isn't being taught respect. but yeah. i in all of my warm-ups and in everything there is some sort of distribution and footwork involved like because like i said that's 90 percent of what you're doing but if you're asking me to spend an hour breaking down the mechanics when i have them for one day a week and your and your club coach isn't doing that like you know i'm like i gotta kind of put can we this can we also address the mental part, okay? If your son or daughter <laughs> is mm -hmm. consistently not doing well at goal kicks, 
yet to the point it could be head coach it could be something you know to ask you you're like i'll give you three minute quick lesson but you go do this on your own time thank you but if you are not addressing the mental block Mm -hmm. that you may have with goal kicks so actually saying okay you know what what's going on with you mentally every time you step up to kick the ball and if it's every single time you step up to kick the ball you're like oh my god i hope it goes far oh my god oh my god i'm gonna shank it what's gonna happen absolutely there's doubt if you're not addressing that, then you're screwed. But to, to, to make, how do you actually get past that is mm-hmm. taking the time on your own. Thank you. To do this. When I was, when I was 15, I, again, I used to be the shyest kid in the world. I told this, but then I became <laughs> a loud person. She's and I told the world, it, we believe it. I oh, was, no. you have to talk to my mom. I, I told the world I was going to be like the best. I was going to go to the Olympics, all this stuff. Which you did. And then, yeah, but <laughs> took, took Just a saying. but then I got cut when I was 14. I got cut yeah. from the BC team, which is like the state team. I remember all my friends made it and I was crying. I was like, ah, and I remember driving home and I was like, my mom was like, hey, we love you. And my dad's like, mm. and then my dad wanted to cry with me, like, worst thing in my life. <laughs> and he pulls over and he turns to me and he says, what are you going to do about it? Exactly. You're going to make this one person determine. And the next year I did 15 minutes more every single day before practice or after practice. And again, if you're a kid out there or a parent, 15 minutes more, we, we do that on our phone easily. And if you take those 15 minutes and you line up five balls and you just go ping, it doesn't, you don't even have to look at the destination, get the feeling right, get your mind right, get your mind to the point where you're like, you know what, I'm starting to feel confident. Then take it to the field and then work on an empty field when there's nobody and start to build the confidence up here of striking the ball with no expectations. Nobody, because the thing is so many goalkeepers who have this problem with goal kicks, they go practice, practice, blah, 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 but they never address the block and the block is here. If you already feel like you failed before you need to strike the ball, forget it. But yeah, and- what, no, you're, yeah. you're, you're hundred percent right. And, and the thing is also like, where does that block come from? It comes from making a failed goal kick no. and maybe getting the ball put in the back of the net, you know, and, and then the parents being mad and the players being like, and then, yeah. And then the coach and shame on you coach, the coach saying, well, you know, little Joey can't take a goal kick. So, Hey, Paul, because you can yeah. boot the ball really far. You go take his goal kicks for you. So yeah. what are you doing right there? Coach, are you basically like like confirming this negativity yeah. and that he's not good enough to take goal kicks. Are you going to allow this kid to fail and succeed instead? Well, you know, I don't take goal kicks because I don't kick them very far. And so Paul takes my goal kicks for me. Well, so great. Do I'm something glad. about it. So, so, yeah. go, so coach, no, allow the kid to fail, but is winning that important to you? Like, or is the long goal kick that important to you that you can't allow this kid to learn and succeed and fail on their own and, 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 and like kind of build character that way. And yes, mm-hmm. all everybody listening, get your butt out to the park and go kick the ball. Mm-hmm. You know, if you can, if you think for one minute that the time that you clock in in club soccer and clock out three times a week and maybe a couple games on the weekend um, is gonna put you in, if you have aspirations of moving forward in soccer, is gonna put you there, you are 100% wrong. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know how much time, and Karina can say this, and Mike can say this, do you know how much time I put in on my own without mm-hmm. a goalkeeper coach by myself up against a wall or in the backyard or in the backfield and kicking balls and doing punts and doing drop kicks and doing like volleys against the wall and everything I could do by myself? That's that if you if you're these are your aspirations. No. And so nobody has an excuse. So moms, dads, if you're like, oh, I can't believe he got cut. I'm like, how much time does he put in? No, it's all what you do on your own when no one is watching. Yeah. That's the most important. When no one's watching, what do you do and who are you? Yeah, all because right, guess Mike, what? That person you're clip. because that person you're up against in that position might be doing it. I, I wanna I wanna I wanna bring this up in regards to, you know this generation versus you know past generations and stuff like that and i think one thing that's been kind of lost in this generation recently you know which i think is starting to come back is the improv improv improvisational aspect of goalkeeping you know for i think for for kind of a, a long period of time karina you know maybe 2000 2010 a lot of goalkeepers were becoming very robotic 
they were becoming very is much. Is this a ball over the top? This is a ball over the top. There's a one v one on Kaylin. <laughs> There's a one v one on Kaylin uh, where she de- where she has a really solid kick save. And one of the reasons I want to bring it up is because the improvisational f- manner of you know, Kaylin, obviously she grew up in Canada as well, too. She used to watch hockey all the time. And she says, you know, outside of the spread and the kick and the case save and all and a block and all of that stuff, that's sort of coming naturally to her because she watched hockey goalkeepers doing this constantly over and over and over again. And so she, to her, as opposed to, she's in a compact shape right there, but as she sees that this ball is slow, she goes, okay, well, where's the ball coming closest at the fastest moment? My foot. So I'm going to sneak right. out like that. Um- but we've talked about this, and KK, you can definitely like interrupt me, but we've talked about this. There's a difference between a kick save from 15 yards away when you're just being lazy and you're in your heels and you're falling backwards and your body weight's not forward. And this is five, this is under 10 yards away from her, and that's her quickest reaction. It's a bullet to her lower left, lower right. And the first thing there is her foot, you know, and yes, we're talked weight forward, hands down, and everything like that. I have no problem with this. I have a problem if you back that up 10 yards and now you're making a kick save. Now yeah. I don't. Yeah. I don't By the way, Kaylin, Kaylin being the consummate professional position. she is, she's not happy with this. I, as, you, as you see, she goes, my bad after that. That's leadership right there. She's Listen, like, oh, I'm slightly out of position. Okay. No, no one who's ever played this position is going to argue that save. And let me tell you something else too. Another point since we're talking to the viewers, Okay. If you're at home, and the reason why she can make this save is because she's trained behind the back line on balls coming over the top, Mm -hmm. okay? If you think you're just going to train your goalkeeper for the half an hour that you do shooting (laughs) or just do crossing and finishing, and you don't actually train your goalkeeper when the ball's in the other half, in the front, like in the final third of the other half, coming back, your goalkeeper will never make that save. Now, the other thing, too, let's give her credit. She's running backwards, right? She has an awareness where the, the, the goal is. Mm-hmm. She is the reason she comes down and cuts the angle. Again, if you're sitting on the line, like, I don't even know what you do in that position. And she comes and she makes herself big. She makes herself brave, okay? That is a kick save to me. Like, if you played the position, you know you don't have the time while running back, setting, cutting down the angle to make a save clean and hold it, Okay. To Saskia's point, further away, yes. But the most important part and the learning tool on that clip is that where was she? Where was her start point? She was comfortable behind the line so that she, if the ball was further over the line, she'd come in again, talk about unconventional saves that never really happened many years ago, be at the top of the 18 to come kick it out. And people don't even count that as a save. Goalkeeper oh, I hate that. Save, right? Because it's the way the game's evolved. The game's evolved where the goalkeepers if you look at a heat map, they're running 6K, 5K a game. Yeah. Right? I know in, in three, 2.8 miles, sorry. You know what I mean? Oh. But mm-hmm. because they're moving, it, you, they're no longer standing there. So if you're training a goalkeeper and you have a goalkeeper only messing with the 18 and within the 18, you fail them because you set them up to fail in a save like this. So to me, the end product is the kick save. It's what all of the things that led into that. The presence, the te- you know, to, to, to drop back. And I would, I would never, if I was, and, if and I was I, on air, I would have been like, great to And I actually totally disagree with the fact that Sheridan was just like, I was out of, I don't think she was out of position. No. I think she had both posts covered. I think she was nice and big. I think her body weight was forward. I think her positioning was good. And it was a kick save because that's what it called for. And I have no problem with that. I think it's a great save. And I think, and I agree with you, her adjustments leading up to the save is what, as a goalkeeper and as a coach, what you want to look at? Uh, like, but, but, look at the look at like men and women. We can look at Manuel Neuer, Casper Schmeichel. We can look at Kaylin Shetterin, uh, Steph Labe. Of course, I'm going to name all the Canadians. Alyssa. Like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> goalkeepers are making kick saves. Like, you're you're being trained. And I remember when I was retiring, I'm like, Jesus, because the bone in the stretches your flexibility is important you're being trained to just come out and be big right right to come down and cut it don't give them the chance to even see the goal it shifted so kick save whatever sometimes it's off like it doesn't matter the ball is not in the back of the net and it's no Keep longer the ball. routine <laughs> perfect cup like you don't see those anymore like if you look again at whatever league men or women the position is the saves are not coming perfect yeah. they're dealing with like the 
balls are doing all they do. Sometimes I get mad when, and I know I got in trouble a couple of times on the air for, <laughs> for defending goalkeepers, but the ball's coming in and they punch it. Great decision. You can't hold on to that. <laughs> you know what I mean? They bobble it and it's in the back of the net. Then you know what I mean? So, but again, I think the one, the, the problem we are finding with that and with youth, I think is that they see that and they automatically yeah. <laughs> parry it or, yeah. or, or, and I'm for just sure. like, dude, I'm like, how slow yeah. was that ball coming at you? Open up your hands and catch it. Okay. Yeah, like, absolutely. You know, there, there's a you're, fundamental, you're, not play, you're not playing against, you know, there, there's the There's a fundamental boys. difference when it's coming yeah. in at 80 miles an hour yeah. and it's dipping yeah. and moving and everything like that. And you're moving across the goal and you make a save. I just volleyed the ball to you. <laughs> like, you <know>? Absolutely. <laughs> like, just catch it. <laughs> like, okay. So I want to show right this right here, because speaking of the parrying thing, I, I want I, I love the fact that you brought that up, Karina, because it is so important for kids to see when to track a ball and follow through and when to try to hold a ball clean. And this is a situation where you track a ball and follow through and get in a mm -hmm. nice solid position right there and handle mm -hmm. it and make it look effortless like that. Because mm -hmm. if she tried to catch that, no. she makes a meal out of it based on her yeah. position. And you put it in a safe space too. I mean, the other thing too is working on pairing the Good ball point. and that putting it in a dangerous spot, right? Is that right? She puts it in a safe place. Yes, it is. Hey, look at look at us, Rutgers. Hey, I worked at Rutgers. Hey, I played at Rutgers. My banner Glencrook. hangs over that stadium, man. I know. I just said, Tesca. <laughs> Glenn Crooks right now is like so happy. Yes, Michael O'Neill. Let's give you a shot. Let's go through the whole chain. By the way, I'm so I'm still gonna have to text Kaylin after this and be like, hey, by the way, we used as an example on the podcast with Karina for an hour. <laughs> Tell her I said she's my hero. You know, um, I think that yes, I agree with. I think we're all on the same page, and I agree with you 100 on the evolution of this. I, I I can't keep not going back to the size of these players. Oh the, my god! The the strength of the shots. Um, when I played, you know, maybe a handful of people shot the ball with the pace oh, yeah. um, that now 90% of the kids on the team do. And, you know, mm -hmm. granted I'm with UCLA and it's, you know, the upper upper, but, you know, just watching these kids ping a ball, man. I mean, that used to be like reserved for like Michelle Akers and, and mm -hmm. Mia and a couple people, but now it's like everywhere you turn this thing got on fire. And so the strength and the speed and the reaction of the goalkeepers is, is comparable to that. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's, it's pretty cool to see. I, I, Karina, I love one thing that I love one thing that you brought up too, which I actually hadn't even thought about before in regards to the factors like how to design your session nowadays based on the modern game is that because the goalkeeper and you brought this up that the based on the goalkeeper's starting positions today is so different than it was 20, 30 years ago, mm -hmm. then your session design is going to be very different because of based on where the goalkeeper is going to be recovering from where they're going to be attacking from all those sorts of things. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I think that, you know, I think it's really important that a lot of goalkeepers, I, I myself personally, as a goalkeeper coach, I do a lot of high to low training now, mm -hmm. as opposed to starting low and then going high when it comes to the def defensive side, because it's always like we had the ball, we lost the ball rather mm -hmm. than like I'm back and defending quote unquote. Absolutely. And yeah. it's so important because you have to see, it's like, it's, it's sad to say, but you never want to be in the game as a goalkeeper and see an image for the first time ever. <laughs> right. Yeah. You want to have been like, Oh, okay. Like I've seen this before. Not a big deal. I mean, I know I was a bit more of a chiller goalkeeper. I mean, I did my yelling and screaming, but like my mentality before, like I was listening to Bob Marley before game. Right. Like I was just like, <laughs> I'm just going to be chill because I knew I had the energy to raise. But at the same time, you don't want to be in a game going, like, oh, what's this, right? You want to be like, oh, yeah, I see this. I know how to do it. You know, like from a movement, you get, again, not, like if you're in an 18 and you're doing a drill, start at the top of the 18, running backwards, and then you're set position. You know yeah. what I mean? Reacting to the game because goalkeepers have to understand that they're a pivotal part of the offense. They're a pivotal part. If you're too far back, you're a man down because the other team's probably Absolutely. playing with their goalkeeper as a part of, you know, the action. So, Absolutely. I mean, to your point, it's like you have to, and, and coaches, I think that's the thing because most coaches, they're not seeing this in the overall training, right? They're, they've learned and they've gotten their license basically on the <laughs> 10 players, right? And there's that person back there that they need 
more importantly than they actually want to admit to. Because if you don't have a good goalkeeper, that's the difference easily in a game. Yeah, but you but also now, can't. You also can't not train with eleven. Yeah. And then expect the 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 one. I would mm-hmm. say the one. You can't all of a sudden expect the one to to step up with something you're not training. Like mm-hmm. that, you know, and obviously with Amanda and everything at UCLA and stuff like that, obviously everything incorporates the goalkeeper, all Absolutely. movements back and everything because they are pivotal. We are 11 yep. players on the field, not, not 10 and one. And so, yeah, they see everything. They're used to everything. They're used to the involvement. But if you don't do that, coaches out here, don't come to me and be like why doesn't you know little sally get it well maybe because Mm -hmm. you never incorporate her in practice yeah absolutely maybe you're like hey go go catch over there we're gonna shape and we're gonna work on things and and then okay now we're going to do shooting at the end absolutely and i mean if you even look at the fifa report from this last world cup from the goalkeeping i think it was the greatest advancement of all the positions right the types of shots that they were stopping, um, how they were, uh, the pass percentage, the heat map, how they were moving. There's so many different things about the game and especially the position where this is the greatest advancement. So I say this again, like you have to get specialized training as a goalkeeper, you know, you have to get specialized training as a goalkeeper. And for the goalkeepers at the World Cup, they showed it over and over. I mean, To me, I love the World Cup for so many aspects, but I loved watching the development of the goalkeepers and how it's like, wow. There were such good goalkeepers in the World Cup. Oh my God, the the, the goalkeeping was- It was, 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 you know, and it was such a joy to watch. And Karina, you know, obviously, you know, I was listening to you and texting you and and stuff like that, but, um, although you ignored me, but it's okay. Um, No! I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But to watch, such such good goalkeeping when you've watched previous world cups and it's so bad mm-hmm. and that's all anybody points out mm-hmm. that look how good the team's playing and then the goalkeeper makes a horrible mistake and stuff mm-hmm. and i felt that this last women's world cup was the opposite of that yeah like christine but, from chile oh my god are you kidding me we gotta oh get my her on and <laughs> she's uh, and there's it was re- I loved watching her. I, I love like I like honestly I remember I Lexi Lawless was like, Will you stop it? I'm like, Hell <laughs> Ruckers, by the way. Lexi Ruckers. <laughs> <laughs> like, but honestly, like honestly, and I think that's the thing is like because to your point, task of where we've been before with the position, it's like, oh the goalkeeper let the team down and let the team down. Right, right, right. It's just um, oh my god, the goalkeeper allowed the team to get to this position. It's like this excitement that we're like, we're finally getting seen and we feel heard and we're like, wow, like look at us shine. And it's like all of us shining. And again, it's kudos to like, go watch, like go keep in training at the top end. There's no, like, it's not conventional. It's but literally- I, also, I also think part of that with the new generation is because a lot of us goalkeepers were goalkeepers not because it was like, I mean, I was a goalkeeper because I was like crazy and athletic and I wanted to jump around and dive around. Um, but I think now kids think I want to be a goalkeeper. And I mm-hmm. think that they start a lot younger and as opposed to, all right, little Pam over there, you know, she's not the most athletic. So do you want to play goal for the team? Like that, those days are kind oh, of, you mean gone. the big, the big yeah. girl who's not very good with her feet. I wasn't like, going to see put the, her in the goal. I, I just wanted to shy away from that. I just, Whoa. Well, Okay. Little Pam, who wasn't okay. very athletic, is what I okay. said. Like, like, uh, uh, uh. Hey, I got big girl. <laughs> by the way, got- by the way, your your definition of big girl might be different than my definition. I meant like a tall I, I girl. I never said big girl. I just said okay. unathletic. Okay. <laughs> so, oh my gosh. Hey, I I owned my bigness. Look at me. Absolutely, <laughs> man. Are you kidding me? Don't, on, I've had a baby. Don't make me pull Speaking that baby down. You want to see my baby? Yes. So we're gonna yes. wrap up, but we absolutely have to see Paris. Yeah, we okay. definitely have to see. And t- uh, yeah. Shannon wanted me to tell you, um, she loves you, she misses you, and you better bring her that baby. No, <laughs> once we're yeah. done with the pandemic thing, yeah, yeah, like, no, yeah and, sure. and, and KK, well, as as things start developing again, maybe before the you know upcoming season or whatever, I think I would really love to have you back on to talk about the development of the goalkeeping position in the developing nations because you know. It's one of the positions that I think, you know, was ignored for so long. And I think that's one of the reasons why he's has such atrocious goalkeeping uh, in CONCACAF oh, yeah. qualifiers and those sorts of things. <gasps> um, 
Hi, Paris. Hi, Paris. Oh my God! Look at that smile. Oh my yeah. God! Look at that face. <laughs> I gotta on, take, take the earpiece out. I gotta I take, take the earpiece out so she can hear you guys. Okay. Paris. Hi, Paris. with us live TV. Live Facebook. We're taking Paris, this. Phoenix. Oh my gosh. Oh my God, she's beautiful. Hi, Paris. It's the first goalkeeping uh, appearance. Hi, Paris. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Hi, Hello. Hi. Are you a soccer player or whatever you want to be? Oh, I screwed up the whole show. I can't hear you. <laughs> People are tuning in right now and they're like, I don't know what this is. <laughs> Look at those. We're, we're gone. Okay. No, 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 no. You guys still there? She there? I don't think she can hear us. Oh, she can't hear us. Okay. Can you hear Let's us? Let's see if we can try this. Okay. okay. All right. This is what happened. Oh, my God. Her. KK, she's okay, beautiful. Back. I can hear you guys. She's All right. beautiful. Oh, Hi. What's that, what's that say on her shirt right there? That's a big heart. It says, sweet heart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. she's gorgeous congratulations Kay. yeah thank you my future congratulations goalie. my Once. future goalie <laughs> no pressure <laughs> well well kk uh I, I mean you got so many things going on i mean uh somebody somebody rec uh, a year ago you know they told me they're like oh they're like you want to get karina she's like the energizer bunny so you know you, you, she, she just keeps going and going and going and going and going so you'll have to catch her when you can um but if uh, if people want to yeah. connect with you, either 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 more on you know what your role is at Concacaf or they want to talk goalkeeping or whatever, um, is the best place to reach out to you is at your website. Okay. I have a website. Um, I have Instagram and I have Twitter. So any of those would probably be best. But longer form, yes, my website. All right. Well, cool. Well, we'll put that in the show notes. And remember, guys, contact at insidethe18media.com. That's the number 18. If you have a guest suggestion or a topic suggestion or at Goalkeeper Podcast on all social media platforms, remember, please, to follow at Saskia underscore Weber on all social media platforms. <laughs> it's very, very, it's very, I think everyone's like, yeah, that's great. There's a baby. There's a baby. So yeah, there's a baby. Talking? Look actually at the baby. Is it the baby? Yeah. There's a baby. But you know, baby here's the deal. Um, We're to, all, to all you listeners and everything, this has been a, sorry if this was a reunion for me, but um, that's my sister basically. And it's so good to see her. So, so good um, to see you too. I got a plus one. Yeah, you got a plus one. I'll make sure I'll make sure you're on the list. <laughs> right, I love Bye, you. Guys. I love you. Love you too. All right. <laughs> That's all the time on Inside the 18 and we are out later guys. Yeah.